Hello, everybody. Welcome. Have you ever been asked the question, why Detroit? Why live here? Why work here? Why spend time here? Why stay? Why come? Well, I've gotten that question more times than I can count. As a lifelong resident of the city of Detroit, my entire life never not living in the city proper, and choosing to stay in Detroit after college instead of pursue opportunities around the country, and moving to downtown Detroit in 2003. And it actually led me to start an organization to answer this question, why Detroit? So that organization has grown and changed many times over the years as the city of Detroit has. Some of you might remember Inside Detroit, little grassroots organization, our collaborative project, DeHive, the Detroit Experience Factory. And we've taken over 150,000 people on experiential tours of Detroit to help answer that question, why Detroit? Today, we've evolved into the City Institute, which helps, which helps communities tell their story in order to attract and retain talent, engage and inspire residents, promote small businesses, and most importantly, build equitable and thriving cities. Why is that work important? Because too often, we focus on our challenges. And believe me, the challenges exist. And they do in every city. We're working across the country now. And every city, whether it's El Paso or Windsor or Vegas, they all are focusing on their challenges without realizing their assets. And we have entire tours and presentations on those challenges. Don't get me wrong. They are there. But this is so important. Assets and challenges are not mutually exclusive. They exist simultaneously, and they do in every city. I mean, if I ever said for years, if I said anything good about Detroit, oh, have you tried the cupcakes, the good cakes and bakes? What about the schools, right? So, you know, we have to say both of those things exist at the same time. And what we, as we are learning about all of these great recommendations in order to grow Michigan, one thing I want us to keep in mind is that we have to realize that Detroit has a value proposition today. And Michigan has a value proposition today. And yes, we want to change things and improve things like transit and education. We should absolutely be doing that. But we need to make the pitch for why Detroit, why Michigan today. And then some people will choose to stay, choose to come. And they can be part of then making those transitions. But if we don't know what, how do you know what you need unless you know what you have? And too often, in some of the recommendations, which we've been doing for 15 years or more, you know, it's like, you know, we need a lot of bars and restaurants downtown. And this was, you know, even back then, it was like, oh, well, actually, we have X, Y, and Z, so we really only need P, Q, and W, right? And especially talking to young people and helping them understand those assets and seeing Detroit or seeing Michigan not as just a child, but as a grown-up with and the, all the opportunities that this city and state exist. So let's really quickly go through that question, why Detroit? This is normally an hour presentation, so we have three minutes left, so bear with me. Um, but did you know we have over 800 bars, restaurants, and coffee shops in the city of Detroit? And we actually keep this checklist, which you'll be happy to know is about to be updated and re-released for the first time since pandemic. Thank you, Bank of America, for your sponsorship. Um, but yes, that's everything you could possibly want. Do you like martinis or drinks that are great for Instagram? Or do you like drinks that are great for your budget? Do you like rock and roll or jazz or techno, German food or Thai food or East African food, every type of thing you could possibly want right here in the city of Detroit. We also have the second largest um, theater district, which I'll get to, but we also have world-class museums. And I guess, you know, oh, the DIA, yeah, it's great. But we take these for granted, right? The DIA, the New York Times art critic, said it's the closest, that Diego Rivera's Detroit Industry Mural is the closest thing America has to the Sistine Chapel. That's a big deal, right? And we have the amazing Charles H. Wright Museum, which was the largest one like it in the world until the Smithsonian copied off of us. Uh, and then the Historical Museum, which won the gold medal for any museum exhibit in the country a few years ago for its amazing Detroit 67 exhibit. Uh, I'm on the board there, so please support the Detroit Historical Museum. Uh, and anyway, we could go all day on our museums, but they really are special. And of course, Motown, we're the only place in the world that has that. Professional sports. You might have heard of a couple of these, right? But 
people. Again, do you know how many cities would love to have all four major sports teams playing downtown? And I got to give a shout out to Detroit City FC because our soccer team, yes, we have a professional soccer team that has been kicking butt and taking names for the last few years when some of our other teams weren't doing as well. So we can't forget about them. You also get all the concerts that come to these spaces, right? You get Beyonce and Metallica and Taylor Swift and places that you know, aren't as big, even though they exist because air conditioning does, they're not gonna get all of those big concerts. Someone's gonna have to come to Detroit to see them. We also have the second largest theater district in the country. Yes, I've counted them. 13,000 theater seats in a two block radius around Grand Circus Park. And that's Broadway and Avant Garde and the Fox obviously anchors it all with 5,000 seats. Uh, but opera is amazing here and they completely restored that theater. Uh, and that doesn't even count the Fisher or the new um, Hillbury Gateway project. The architecture, man, people will travel thousands of miles and say, I want to see this, show me that. And we just drive by because we're doing a lot of driving and don't realize what we have. Because of the architecture and a lot of other things, did you know we're the only city in the United States to be named a UNESCO city of design? And that includes reasons from our amazing murals like Girl with a Deep Earring, but also our auto design and shoe design and everything in between. We also have amazing parks and public spaces, right? The city of Detroit runs over 300 parks and public spaces throughout the entire city. Obviously, Belle Isle is also an amazing space, 983 acres. It's like bigger than Central Park with a beach, so that just makes it better. Uh, but I also got to give a shout out to Campus Martius, which number one public square uh, in North America, and also Rouge Park. I love this little picture of the path because where is that? Is that the UP? No, the stone bridges and, and wooded paths are right here in the city of Detroit. Also so fun fact, number 3042, Rouge Park is actually bigger than Belle Isle at 1,100 acres. Uh, so then there's the Riverwalk, number one Riverwalk for three years in a row, and amazing parks. I just took my kids to the Fire and Ice Festival at Valade Park this last weekend. And all of the coolness about the, about the Riverwalk, and we are just getting started at the, the 20 years. Coming up is the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Memorial Park, $75 million park that's opening next year. And it's going to connect to the 27-mile Greenway. So I could go on and on and on. Our housing costs are amazing here comparatively. Now affordability is you know, subjective everywhere, but it is certainly more affordable here than a lot of other places. And unlike in 2008 when I was doing the same presentation, we have a lot of jobs. These are just a few that we pulled. I think the stat is over 200,000 jobs. And now we get to add investment in education. What? Well, you heard about it. We have a long way to go. But my four-year-old triplets, yep, four-year-old triplets are going to Detroit Public School, Montessori, pre-K, 18 kids, three, student, three teachers, seven minutes from my house for free, sending me, uh, saving me a ton of money this year. Yeah. Um, also, the Detroit Promise, thank you, Detroit Regional Chamber, because people say, oh, good luck paying for college with triplets. They won't pay for college. If you go to high school in the city of Detroit, you get last dollar in basically free college to over 20 different universities, from University of Michigan to CCS to Alma and everywhere in between. These are huge parts of the value proposition that we need to be talking about. And to wrap up, the big thing is, it's not the big things that I just talked about. It's the little things. It's that we know our neighbors and the owners of these shops and restaurants, like Good Cakes and Bakes, who hires returning citizens and pays a living wage, or Bao Bao Fair, who gives back and actually does fundraising for Freedom House, which was the same organization that helped them when they came as refugees from Burundi, or amazing projects that are coming that really show that development for the people, by the people, is possible. So Detroit People's Food Co-op co is um, any, any day week now, and we're so excited by that. And we sum it up by saying, Detroit is big enough to matter in the world and small enough where you can matter in it. And I wouldn't live anywhere else. <laughs>